Welcome and aloha. I'm Mark Schlav, the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we're going across the sea of time to talk with Hawaii lawyer Greg Louis Kwan. Greg is a personal injury lawyer who has been practicing law in Hawaii for about 40 years and has helped many clients and their families over the years. I've asked Greg to talk about his own family today, to talk about his ancestors who came across their own rough seas to Hawaii and explain why, as he recently told me, he is proud to be Ukrainian. All right, welcome, Greg, how are you? I'm doing fine, thank you very much for having me on the show. Well, very, I'm very interested in hearing uh, your, your story and your background. Um, you, you told me you're proud to be Ukrainian. Well, for, first, let me ask you, why are you Ukrainian? Explain that. What's your Ukrainian heritage? And why do you consider yourself to be Ukrainian? I consider myself to be Ukrainian because my grandmother uh, uh, migrated from um, the empire, from the Russian empire in the years prior to the 1917 revolution uh, from Kiev. Ethnically, my grandmother was white Russian, or ethnically, she's from Belarus. Uh, and uh, but she lived in K Kiev with her uh, husband and her two two young children before they were forced before she was forced to leave. Okay, so you you've kind of adopted the Ukrainian uh, heritage from uh, yes, I yes, yeah, yeah. Sorry, go uh, ahead. Uh, yes, I have. Ever since the, uh, the invasion started, uh, I, th I think on February 24 uh, of, of this year, six months ago, I've uh, I had previously identified uh, myself as Russian because that's how it came across to us. And technically speaking, uh, Kiev, uh, although it was part of Ukraine, it was part of the the Russian Empire for 250 years at, until 1917, and then from 1921. It became part of the USSR and, and remains so until uh, 1991. I don't identify with being Russian, uh, nor do I identify with being Chinese so much. Although those those are the, my you know genetic background and all, uh, because I'm so happy uh, to be part Hawaiian and living in Hawaii and being part of the United States. I'm very proud to be an American citizen, and I'm so much happier here than living in. Uh, the evil empire of of, of Vladimir Putin uh, and and everything that he's trying to do in my in my grandmother's uh, homeland to all of her relatives. Well, let's talk a little bit about your grandmother, um, and uh, I guess, and then and then we'll well, you're you're proud to be Ukrainian. Why why are you proud to be Ukrainian right now? At this very moment in time, I am so proud to be Ukrainian because. My, my, my grandmother's countrymen are fighting for their independence, freedom, and for democracy. There is nothing short uh, of what's going on in, in, key in Ukraine than a proxy war between the forces of totalitarianism, and I hate to be so political and blunt about that, versus the force of democracy, as defined by the United States, the NATO countries, uh, the soon to be NATO countries, uh, Finland and Sweden, uh, and, and our, our, my grandmother's close neighbors, Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. And um, yeah, I, I, I feel very strongly about this and, and it hurts me. I think about this every day. And, and my grandmother's countrymen have fought incredibly well to uh, have survived as a country. I, I'm just totally amazed. So you are proud of what the Ukrainians have done and that has that heritage or that background you are adopting. You're you're saying, "Hey, I, I like that, and I I want to I want to be part of that, and I want to recognize that." That's what I hear you saying. Uh, that is correct. And uh, not only have they uh, um, managed to uh, to perform incredibly well and conduct an incredible resistance, but they have reached out to. Uh, to the, at the United Nations and uh, uh, across Europe and across the world to garner support. And uh, it's really amazing to me uh, that uh, my grandmother's countrymen, after only 31 years of independence, 
they uh, know what they want and they're willing to fight for it. And it's not surprising given the history, but I don't want to go back and talk about the the, found, the founding of Kiev and the Kievan Rus and the, and the, uh, the invasion of the Mongols in 1240 and all that. But they've been through a lot and apparently they have learned a lot and they know what they want and they're fighting for it. And, and I'm, and I feel, I, I don't mind paying ten dollars a gallon for gas if it means that we can support my grandmother's uh, 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 countrymen in their fight for independence and freedom. Okay, well, let's. You know, the the other thing is, you you seem awfully proud of your grandmother. And tell me a little bit more about her. What what about you? You know, who was your grandmother, and what 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 made you? What makes you proud of her? It's a very difficult question uh, because of all the tremendous. My grandmother endured. Uh, she was very reluctant to speak to to her children, uh, and but I'll tell you what she endured. In the years before the Russian Revolution, and I don't have a precise fix because I don't have her immigration papers, uh, um, but she traveled by train uh, the distance of the entire uh, Russian country, which is the largest country at the time. 4,500 miles from Kiev to Harbin, which is in China, then to Vladivostok, which is a Russian port on the Pacific. And she traveled another 4,500 miles uh, before she was forced to get off the the, uh, the ship because her daughter was sick and, and needed attention in Hawaii. Otherwise, she would have ended up in San Francisco. So my grandmother traveled 9,000 miles seeking freedom and, and uh, peace. And, uh, and this is over 100 years ago. But why, uh, why, why, why did she have to leave, or why, why did she feel she had to leave Ukraine? What, what prompted that, and what was there something going on with the family, or what, what happened there? Let me give you a little bit of background. Uh, my, um, my grandmother was married to a lower level bureaucrat in the Tsarist regime, uh, and uh, the. The, uh, the Russian Empire, uh, uh, which ended with uh, King Nicholas, I'm sorry, Tsar Nicholas II, ended in November of uh, 2017. Uh, the, uh, her two brothers, my grandmother's two brothers, uh, were groomed to also join the, the Tsarist regime, and they had been sent to Istanbul for education. Uh, on the way back from Istanbul, the Bolsheviks murdered my two, uh, my, my grandmother's two brothers, and she and her husband, although he had a, a, a good job with, with the Tsarist regime, decided that they need to leave Russia uh, or the Russian Empire. They're, they're from Ukraine. Uh, and so she gathered her two children, uh, my auntie Nina, who was three, and her son Sasha, who was one, and, and she got on a train. I suspect the arrangements made because there are several things that needed to happen along the way. She ended up uh, um, in Vladivostok, uh, and when she got to Vladivostok, she learned that her husband had been killed. And uh, so she left a widow, uh, headed for uh, the United States. Uh, her son took ill, died before the ship got to Japan, and she had to bury him in Japan. And she headed uh, with with her daughter, my Auntie Nina, uh, uh, on, on across the Pacific towards, um, towards San Francisco. But, you know, uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to show a photo of... Anastasia, that's your grandmother. Anastasia Salamarkin is my grandmother. And the other, in, in this photo, the young girl? The young girl uh, would be a few, and this picture was taken in, in Hawaii um, at, because obviously my Auntie Nina uh, had, had grown a, a, at least a couple of years uh, 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 before this picture was, was taken from the time they had traveled. And uh, that's, a, that's a, a picture, and I don't have a date on that picture, unfortunately. That's my grandmother, Anastasia Salamarkin. Uh, she was a stage actress uh, in, in Kiev uh, huh. before she left the country. And uh, my Auntie Nina died in the 1950s. I, I knew her briefly uh, while I was a child. Okay, so so that that would be, a, okay, so that's a, a photo of when they arrived in Hawaii or about the time when they arrived in Hawaii. But uh, I want to put up a map also. You talked about, you talked about their, um, her, her travels. So way over on this map, on the left-hand side is Kiev. Uh, correct. And on the far right-hand side is uh, in China, Harbin, and then Vladivostok, which is, was still part of Russia, I guess, at that time. 
So that, that is where they traveled. That is where she traveled with Nina and Sasha. Is correct. that right? That is correct. By train, is, is that correct? Yes. Harbin was a, a major, uh, 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 it's like Chicago in some respects. It was a major uh, um, center of, of, uh, of, uh, of transportation by, by, by train and railroad. And it's also, a, I understand, an inland port, uh, one of the few inland ports in, in China. And from Harbin, um, uh, she traveled on to uh, to Vladivostok, another 320 miles or so. It's about 4,200 miles from Kiev to um, to Harbin. And okay. uh, they might have she might have gone to Kazakhstan. I'm not entirely sure which train she took, but uh, uh, the the route would would take her through uh, several different countries. Okay. So and then and then they they got on a boat and Sasha. Uh, died uh, on the way, and, and Sa Sasha, Sasha, uh, uh, I'm not sure when he got sick, but but at the, before they reached uh, Japan, uh, he he had uh, gotten sick and, and passed away, so she had to bury him in Japan. Okay, and then and then they they went on to Hawaii. Uh, and, right. But what happened with with Nina? Nina also took ill. Uh, and I'm not sure how long the journey would take by ship uh, back 100 years ago, but Nina got sick, and uh, the boat stopped in Hilo, uh, my hometown. And um, my grandfather, who was a doctor, Lang Kit, uh, had a Russian midwife, and and he um, he provided medical services to uh, 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 the Russian small Russian community there. When I went to school, <laughs> elementary and high school, there there were several um, uh, kids of Russian descent. Kufrovich and some other uh, families I had married into Portuguese families. Um, there was, there was Panavrov. There, uh, there are a few uh, Russian names that I remember from when I was in uh, grade school in Hilo. That, that's very interesting that there was a Russian community in Hilo. I never, a small one. I never heard of that. And uh, kind of interesting. wonder how that happened. But so what, what happened to Nina? How, I mean, so do, Dr. Lang Kit treated Nina. And ultimately married Anastasia, but right. what happened, to Nina? What what happened to Nina? Uh, Nina, Nina uh, my my grandfather nursed Nina back to health, and uh, and my gra my grandfather and and uh, my grandmother, I uh, got married, and he had five children. Um, the the fourth of whom was my mom, Valentina. Okay. Well, we we have another photo uh, of Anastasia, and who's in this photo? Okay, and I, and again, I don't know the date of this photo, uh, but on the um, let me start from the the far right because that would make more sense. Uh, that's my auntie Nina. She had red hair, but it shows up as blonde in this photo. Uh, next to her is the uh, eldest daughter of uh, Anastasia Salamark and, and Dr. Lang Kit, my auntie Marie, and um, and uh, then of course this is my grandmother Anastasia Salamark, and she might well be pregnant with uh, her. Um, her fourth child, um, my Auntie Anna. But okay, so to her left, and on the left side of the picture is, um, I, I, I'm sorry, I take that back. Second from the right is my uh, Auntie Ida. And uh, uh, on the far left is my Auntie Marie. Sorry about that. Okay. And, and, and so she already had, she started another family. And obviously there was, you know, some love and relationship with the doctor that saved Nina. That's a that's kind of a romantic story, actually. Um yes, I my grand and the reason my grandfather's not in his picture is not because he was disaffected from his wife. Uh although there was some tension because he was a Chinese guy and she was a Russian woman. Uh and so there'd be some cultural differences that, that I won't get into. But um he, because he was Chinese and, and a medical doctor, uh he did not allow his picture to be taken. So I don't have an Im image of my grandfather. Uh, and, and about two months ago, as I was researching this for another family project, my my uh, my oldest uh, cousin, first cousin, uh, uh, Snooky, who's 91 now, the, the only child and daughter of uh, my Auntie Nina, tells me that her mother was not able to get any information from her mother about the circumstances under which she left Russia. We only found it out because of the, the the Russian midwife who worked for my grandfather told my mom and uh, my oldest brother, uh, uh, you know, um, about information that she had from my grandmother. 
And that's the only reason I have stories about my grandmother. Okay. And so you, you've been, you know, I, I guess this, you, the current events in Ukraine has made you more interested about your own family background. You know, uh, and, yeah, it has. And, and uh, you've done the research on your grandmother, Anastasia. She had a tough life. I mean, she lost brothers. She lost her husband. She lost a son. And she eventually got to Hawaii. It sounds things seems to get better here in Hawaii. I mean, I mean, that's a good sign. I mean, that's what we like about Hawaii. But I mean, what, what have you learned? And, and what can we all learn about grandmother Anastasia's life story? Um, well, I have not only studied uh, my, my grandmother's history, but I've also studied uh, uh, the background of the Kivan Rus and things like that. Uh, but let me, let me, I'm sorry, let me answer your question directly. I think one thing we can learn is that um, the United States for over a hundred years has been a beacon of hope where people will travel long distances to, uh, to live in freedom and, and enjoy democracy. And uh, I'm not sure why my grandmother chose to uh, travel to the West Coast of the United States because many other people traveled to um, across Europe and ended up in, in, in uh, Canada. Canada has the largest Ukraine population outside of Ukraine. And, um, but it's from her perspective, she was seeking a better life. And, uh, I'm only, I'm only 25%, uh, uh, Hawaiian, uh, half Chinese and, um, quarter Ukrainian. Uh, I think Hawaii as well as the United States are, 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 are countries or, or places that are largely, uh, populated by immigrants. And immigrants have helped to build our country. Um, I don't want to get too much into uh, my dad's side of the family, who, who's uh, my grandfather was a a, a a bridge and road builder on, in Hilo, and um, also was a member of the Kuomintang Party and, and returned to China in 1928 to fight the communists. And um, it's kind of ironic. Mark, I want to share something personal with you. I, as a young guy from age 21 to 25, I was a left-wing radical. And um, since then, I've become kind of quite a bit more of a moderate, still quite a bit of a liberal. But uh, uh, to me, what's really important, particularly as a lawyer, uh, are the principles of democracy, uh, the uh, the rule of law that we enjoy, uh, the uh, the idea that uh, if you work hard, study hard, get yourself educated, you can make a better life for, you, for yourself and your children. And um, the ship that my grandmother arrived on uh, or, or was on in, in uh, uh, and arrived in Hilo, uh, were not a bunch of refugees, per se, like boat people. They were full of engineers and and, and uh, other professionals. And along the way, uh, she uh, had a a um she got a boyfriend, and his name was uh, and 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 my mom knew him as Yaya uh, Belyakov, and every few years she would come back because he promised her that he would make his way uh, in uh, in North America and come back for her. And he did. And he came back several times. And she, and she says, you know, she said, I can't leave. I, I've got these five kids with this Chinese doctor guy, you know, and um, she missed uh, she missed the food. My mom told me that she she longed to uh, she really missed the black bread, which I, I take as pumpernickel. And um, is that the you know, it's, it's there's a whole bunch of sorrow and hardship uh, and um, I can't say that I've gained, I can't determine after three generations what elements of uh, my grandmother's uh, culture, heritage, and, and strength that I've gotten. I can only tell you about a few odd things that I think um, I've gained from from being her, her grandson. Well, yeah, yeah. and you, you seem very proud of the Ukrainian current bravery that is being displayed, and your grandmother Anastasia's bravery as she crossed, <laughs> I mean, the sea. And then uh, the immigration on, on, on several sides of your family, you're, you, you believe that those things are all strengths. Is that, that, that's what I hear you saying. And that, they're, and that they're beneficial to Hawaii and the United States. Uh, uh, we, we are a country of immigrants. And uh, of course, we don't have room for everybody that we'd like to get across, but I never for once believed the misinformation foisted by um, 
a former president that everybody who uh, who migrated south across the border were murderers, thieves, and rapists. Uh, I'll just start with that. I think these lies uh, are terrible. These are the kind of lies that Hitler told uh, in his rise to power. And I'd like to uh, draw your attention to a photograph that that uh, that I've not seen, but I've read about of uh, of ship ship workers in Hamburg in 1936. There are hundreds of ship workers all uh, saluting uh, the Hitler salute to Hitler, except for one fellow. His name is believed to be Abram Landsmesser. Abram knew, Abram was a member of, of the Nazi party, uh, but he knew that what Hitler was saying were lies. He knew because his sweetheart, his girlfriend was Jewish. It was the days before the invasion of, of Poland and, and, and the terrible Holocaust stuff, but he knew that that stuff was, was were all lies that that Jews were as just as human as Germans, and uh, we've got to get past this idea about discrimination against uh, newcomers. Uh, there's strengths and weaknesses to every culture that that lands on our shores, be it uh, uh, Hilo Bay, where I'm from, or San Francisco Bay. You know, our big country. You know, um, this prejudice we have against others is. Uh, is of is is an evil that we need to kind of educate ourselves about and and to get past we have to of course be be cautious about uh protecting our own personal privacy and security and everything else but this prejudice about uh other human beings being subhuman is absolutely ridiculous i myself describe i'm a self-described mongrel uh being uh asian caucasian and polynesian and uh if i'm some kind of evil guy uh, you better lock me up because I, you know, I might be dangerous, but I'm not. So, so what I hear you talking about is, yeah, current events, a lot of race issues that have come up quite, quite recently in in United States, and of course, Hawaii uh, is is seems like a, a good place to live. Um, you also uh, earlier when we were talking, you referred to Mark Twain's quote about travel. Uh, and this is one of my favorite quotes also. I'd like to put it up and I'm, I'm just going to read it. Uh, yeah, please do, Mark, because I, I don't have it. I don't have uh, Mark Twain's words uh, memorized, but but he's the guy that uh, uh, that wrote, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, about Jim and uh, Tom Sawyer floating down the, the Mississippi together, two human beings communicating. So his quote is, is a great one. I, I like it. Uh, Travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness. And many of our people need it sorely on these accounts. Broad, wholesome, charitable views of men and things cannot be acquired by vegetating in one little corner of the earth all one's lifetime. I like that quote. What does that quote mean to you? Well, it tells me a couple of things. One thing is that um, one should never ever, and this is part of the training I got from my mom and my dad, one should never ever look down on someone because they come from a different religion, because they're of a different nationality, or if they come from a different place. Uh, all these people deserve, uh, I believe, uh, right to be treated as human beings and to be given an opportunity to prove themselves to be worthy citizens. Um, I know it sounds quite political, but I'm a kind of a political thinking kind of a guy. Well, and, and also, I, the reason I like the quote, because I like to travel. And <laughs> I like, you know, and I, I like to meet people. And one thing I've found is traveling, I mean, to all over the world, uh, is that a lot, we're, we're, we're quite alike. Uh, we're all, we all share a lot of things. And, 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 and really, this hate that some people have for other races disappears if you travel. It, or it, it's helpful to meet these other people and to get to know them. And then you, you learn that they're, they're friendly. And, and in, in many instances, you can have lifelong friendships. So that, I agree. That's what I like. Now, let me ask you, where, where, where are we in Ukraine? What, what are your thoughts about I'm coming back to the, you know, your, your comments about 
what's going on now in Ukraine and the reason that you you told me you were proud to be Ukrainian. What 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 is your view of what's happening? What the United States should do and where it's going? Well, that's a huge question. Um, I personally, I am a, a like I said, I was a left wing radical for five years there when I was in my twenties. Um, I I prefer peace over war as I think most of us do, uh, but I don't think that uh, Vladimir Putin and and his and and his government. Uh, can be uh, can be won over by diplomacy. I, I think the only way to defeat Putin and and his horrible uh, war crimes invasion of my grandma's uh, you know country uh, is militarily. And I'm so proud of the support the United States has given uh, uh, not only since uh, the invasion but prior to the invasion, preparing them about guerrilla tactics and 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 uh, and resistance and arming them with uh, uh, some of the tools. I would like to see more tools than the javelin, and and uh, I'd like to see longer range missiles. I uh, I understand the fear of of our being drawn into a World War III if we supply uh, the Ukrainians with with uh, missiles that would reach the Kremlin and blow it to smithereens, which is what they deserve. But um, I think we're in the right track, and and I I'm proud to see that uh, uh, our country has continued to supply uh, my grandma's countrymen. With the arms, and I'm very happy to see about um, the uh, the arms that uh, the NATO countries have furnished as well. I would like to see jet fighters and other things that uh, might make it easier, but they seem to be doing incredibly well with uh, uh, the. Um, I mean, not only have they infiltrated enemy lines and and have uh, 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 blown up targets in in um, in Crimea and things like that, but uh, They've also managed to be, pay very close attention to the media. I, I uh, Putin hired a bunch of mercenaries who were killed uh, just a matter of a couple of weeks ago because uh, in their boastful uh, advertising uh, journalism uh, in Russia, uh, they took a picture of uh, the street corner where uh, the mercenaries were being housed and, and a couple dozen of those guys were killed by a, a Ukrainian missile. I'm also very proud of uh, the, uh, the Ukrainian sinking uh, the, the Russian flagship, the Moskova, several months ago. Uh, that was a surprise to Vladimir, but th that that fellow and his cohorts are relentless. They're going to have to be defeated militarily. I'm not sure what it's going to take, uh, and uh, we can't put boots on the ground. I think that makes a lot of sense, but I think we should stick with our program and support the Ukrainians all the way okay. till the end. All right, and we have to close now. Is there is there one word or two words that you'd like to close with about, you know, maybe what your grandmother would say about... Uh, about this and what you, how you would feel about that. I'm going to tell you, I'm so appreciative of the fact that she left uh, uh, what, what apparently was a horrible situation. And uh, and it, it, was, it wasn't it was her choice to stay in Hawaii, but... And what you're saying actually is that she, she, she left, she was strong, and she provided a better life for her, her grandchildren and everybody uh, that... Well, my my the story of my grandmother is the story of the American dream. Something that uh, we all should uh, preserve uh, as much as we can, because democracy is not guaranteed in our own United States. And I won't get into the, the percentages of people who don't believe that democracy was threatened on January sixth. Okay, I'm not going to get into that, but uh, we have to we have to stand up for democracy and fight for it at, at every time uh, a threat is made against it. So, Greg, thank you very much for sharing your personal story and your thoughts and and your ideas with us this morning, th th this day today, and uh, I appreciate hearing about your heritage. So, I'm glad you're proud to be Ukrainian. And we're <laughs> close. <laughs> Aloha to everybody. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, 
please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.